Hello, I'm going to start on the farm take two. I'm Christy. Today in the chapel we have Colossians 3.13. <coughs> Be even tempered, content with second place, quick to forgive an offense. Forgive as quickly and completely as the master forgave you. So, yeah. All right. So let's just hop right into it. Um, I honestly thought I was going to have this done and ready to show you. Uh, but it's not. Okay, I'm just going to. I have, I'm on the last round and I haven't just sat in the evening and finished it. So it is here. It's this. I'm going to. I can't picture it with any sleeves on it, so I have one complete ball of yarn in this parcel, and so I'm probably going to make a scarf to match. Um, we'll see. It might turn out to be an infinity type scarf, uh, a long one. So we, we will see. That's all I can say is we will see what. I don't know what I've got enough to do. I can't picture this with any sleeves on it. Um, so we'll see. That's the best I got for you. So, all right. Um, next week, that one I know will be done. I know it will. I just know it in my heart. Um, so I got my angel set I was working on. Um, I'm a little disappointed, but it's okay because I'll just go get some more. Um, I have this many done with the ties on them. And then I have, now I didn't do all of them. I left 50, not done. I didn't need 50, okay? Um, and these are actually extra, so I have all of these. But the problem is, is the ones in the bag have ties, and this is all the ties that I have left. So they didn't give you enough jute for 150 ties. That's okay. I will go find some because I have all these that I still need to do. And I did leave the other 50 unpainted. So we'll go from there and see, you know. But I'll get the ones from, for work done. Uh, pretty much I stopped this weekend and cleaned up the, the sewing room because I've got several things going on that I'm probably not going to be in here doing anything. So the other thing um, I was learning to make bow ties, as y'all know, for work. Oops. And so the Thunder one, I got this material. And I learned a lot from this. Um, he, the person that these are meant for, and I have them pinned. That's why it keeps wanting to flip up that way. Uh, the person that I'm doing these for, as the joke Christmas gift, is a big Thunder fan. Uh, basketball Thunder team out of Oklahoma City. So I did this one. It is too hard to do directional material, especially when this goes different ways because you cannot predict where it's going to come out in the thing. So the ones with polka dots, stripes, that will be the kind that we tie. I have one cut out that I was attempting to figure out how I could do it by learning to tie a bow tie. And I was trying to figure out which way the design should be. But then you got the upside down, right side up thing going on. And it wasn't working, so I have that one cut out. <clears throat> um, I put this one together. This is another one that I was fiddle fussing with. And so I have it pinned. And then I showed you the um, pink one that I made the other day. I have these cut out and ready to go. I just, those I just have to um, sew the thing on the back and put the. Um, clip in them. So that's all I have left to do on those. So these, of course, I have to put together and actually do it. And the extra thunder material. So he's big into basketball, so I attempted to make a basketball. But it looks more like a pumpkin. But it's round, so he's going to get it. It will be a ball. And it is thunder. And it's a one of a kind. So, yeah. Um, it is what it is. You know. And... I have figured out how to make those clip-on bow ties and which ones can make the uh, tieable bow ties. So 
Um, the thing with the tieable bow ties is the front and the back has to be the same material because of the way you flip it. Um, sometimes it's the front that's exposed, sometimes it's the back that's exposed. So, yeah. So it'll have to be all the same material and then um, it has to be something non-directional um, like polka dots or stripes. I've got uh, black and red plaid that I'm going to do for him. I've got dark blue with white polka dots that I'm going to do. Those things will be the ones that he has to learn to tie because anything directional just isn't going to cut it. Um, I still have the gnome one to do and that one I want very specific ones on the front so that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. So it is what it is. Ah. <coughs> okay. I think that is all I was working on in here but oh the drama oh with every wedding comes drama I'm sure you've heard me talk about this but this is just getting out of hand um and it's not anything that anybody can control that that's the sad part so let me back up RJ went to Vegas Macy went with him he was point zero four seconds so four hundredths of a second out of the final go round yes it got pretty tight he did amazing um it was just a really tough competition so he got some day round money um but he didn't make the final you know and stuff and so yeah so he's out there Macy was out there with it for the first couple of days. He did his thing. It was pretty good. She came back Thursday morning. Um, the house was supposed to close on Monday, which was yesterday. And Friday, while RJ's out at Vegas, he gets a call saying that that's not going to happen. The banker, he told the banker, he says, then you need to call the guy because he is not wanting to wait for his money. You know, I've gone through all of this, blah, blah, blah. So the banker called and talked to the gentleman and I guess smoothed it over, whatever. So, um, worst case scenario, I told RJ, we'll find another one. The abstract and the title work is for the land only. It's not for the tiny house he's buying. And so, it is what it is. Um, it, it, you don't have to start all over with that. The appraisal, um, he doesn't have to start all over with that because the appraisal is just for the land. So, yeah, it is what it is. Um, so, got that kind of sort of taken care of he got that he got home Sunday night um, and called the banker Monday so let's visit Macy's trip he he was disappointed in himself but he's glad to be home you know and him and Macy had fun while they were out there uh, so Macy goes and she gets home Thursday morning she comes home and is in absolute tears now she didn't call me she called her mom which is understandable okay so I didn't know this until after the fact um, when things were going awry so Macy's mom did not tell her this until she got home because she didn't want him upset in Vegas she didn't want RJ upset blah 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 so Macy's mom had the little dog that was wounded. It went back to the vet, had a third operation. Um, anyway, the Monday that, I'm sorry, the Tuesday that Macy was out in Vegas, her mom's house caught on fire. So it's only the kitchen. It's only contained to the kitchen. Um, it was a stupid thing to do. Her mom knows you know it, it couldn't it could have been avoided had precautions been taken anyway um but it's not something that was intentional or you know I mean hindsight is 
is 2020. You know, you can see in the back and it's like, well, if you'd done this, this, and this, but hindsight. So the house caught on fire. All the flowers were out in the horse trailer because they had just moved them out. Um, the bridal gown and mom's gown were gotten out of the house. The only thing that got left in to ruin is a veil. Now, number one, it, it was saved. So it actually was down the hallway in the bedroom and everything was contained to the kitchen. So that's a good thing because um, it was just sooty, if that makes sense. It was just blackened, you know, soot. Uh, the gifts that she got at the um, bridal shower all will have to be cleaned. All will have to be, they have soot, you know, some of the boxes, of course, because you open them and you want to see what's inside. And, you know, so some of that stuff has to be cleaned. Um, it's just the kitchen area of her mom's house. They're still living there. Um, the insurance adjuster comes Thursday, Friday of this week. I can't remember. Her mom is dealing with that. Anyway, so Sunday that Macy comes home and finds out that the veil is ruined, but it's not. Okay, it was saved. There was a lady that stepped up and said, I got this. Um, she took it with her. I, I guess she's done stuff for the venue. And she took it. This veil has a 14-foot train. Just saying. So, she took it Friday of last week. And we got word oh, yesterday that it was saved. So, um, yeah, it is what it is. Um, anyway, so Macy and her mom, Macy is just, she's in tears, you know. Anyway, so I get a call Sunday and they were telling me all of this because Macy's like, I thought I could handle it and I just can't, you know. Okay. So I told her, I said, flat out, the veil can be fixed. I said, all I have to do is go to Michael's. I said, I need photos of it. And I need to know what embellishments are on it. You know, I said, but I will need eight to 10 hours straight through. I will be working through the night to get this done. Okay. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, if there was any hand sewn stuff, that's not going to happen. But I just need to see the embellishment and how it is and see if I need to get crystals or um, flowers or I, I don't know I haven't actually seen the veil so anyway she called me in and she was in a panic and at that time we didn't know it could be saved um, I hadn't seen it of course my answer is cascade if you've ever had anything white that you just absolutely thought was ruined the old-fashioned cascade powder put that sucker in there with, you know, a little bit of that. I say a little bit, like a fourth of a cup to, to a kitchen sink. And fill that kitchen sink with water. And you stick it in there and leave it overnight. You can take the writing off of shirts with that. Okay? It will bleach it out better than chlorine bleach. I'm just saying. Old-fashioned cascade, not the little pod things, the powder stuff. That is like amazing whitening power right there okay don't know why don't even know where i learned it that is just how i treat it and i was like i can cascade that baby i can get the soot out it will be fine <laughs> so anyway uh that happened and then come to find out the lady that was supposed to make 60 um or so i, I don't know where the 60 came from uh, so to cut to save money they ordered a smaller cake they've got 150 to 200 people coming to this wedding but to save money they ordered a smaller cake and they had ordered about 60 cake pops which they were supposed to be strawberry cake pops okay they're small bite-sized cakes you know um Nobody eats a whole piece of cake anyway. 
you know, it, it just is what it is. So she said she got a call. The lady wasn't going to get them done in time. And this was Sunday and the wedding is Saturday. I said, okay. I said, not a problem. And she goes, oh, really? She said, I don't have enough cake for everyone. And I said, first off, not everybody eats cake. Secondly, I can whip up four dozen cupcakes and have them there. I said, they're just going to be rosette topped. You know, I said, that's all I really can do. That's all I ever really learned to do. My mother can do roses and prissy. And I never learned to do it because it never really interested me. But if you learn one thing on how to do cakes, do learn to, to do the big thing rosette and any little girl will be happy. Okay. I once did a Pokemon cake. I, I take that back. Learn the rosette and learn the star. I once did an entire Pokemon cake for RJ with star tip. You know, I just changed colors and yeah, it was like coloring between the lines. So that's all I've ever learned to do. I can do what I need to do for my family. Okay. So, um, I am doing brown tulip, uh, cupcake papers and they will, it, it's not one of her colors, but it will go with the rust and the gold and the dark green she's doing. And then I'm going to do dark green, um, frosting. Okay. And I'm going to do rosettes on the top. So I have four dozen cupcakes to make for the wedding. Um, Friday, we've got the rehearsal dinner. I, I just, you know, it's, it's just one thing after another. And it, I really, so last night I called because I needed a snippet of a color. I need them to take a picture of the actual green color so I could match it. And, uh, so I did, I text her, I said, I text her mom because she is, she is just a mess. She's a wreck. Um, so I text her mom and said, Hey, can you get me a snippet so I can match the, the color of the frosting? And I picked up forest green and some black cause I can make forest green darker with black and, uh, food coloring, gel food coloring. Anyway, uh, I asked her if she could send me a little a picture and then tell me whether the picture looks lighter or darker or right on. She says, sure, but you'll have to wait because my washer is clogging up and overflowing and I'm working on getting all this water out of the house. So <laughs> the wash machine has that, you know, my daughter said it best when she, a couple of weeks ago, she realized when she was growing up, I used to say, if it's not one thing, you know, you'd meet somebody and tell, Hey, how you doing? Oh, I'm good. I'm good. You know, if it ain't one thing, it's another. And that was just life. And my daughter says, you know, I always thought that you were being dramatic because it made it sound like there was always some drama going on in your life. And she goes, you know what? There really is. She says, if it's not one thing, it's another. And I said, yeah, but that's life. There's always something happening in life. Now, whether it's all bad, whether it's all good, whether it's pouring down and you feel overwhelmed, all of that stuff still is life. Okay. But as an adult, you literally go from one thing to another. You have the house that burnt, you have the veil to deal with, you have the washing machine that's backing up, you have the wedding to get done. Once the wedding is over, that's added stress gone. Um, and so, yeah, but if you take the wedding stuff out of this, it's just one thing or another. You take the wedding out and you just have a fire, which happens, unfortunately. Um, it was contained to the kitchen service pros coming to clean. Um, then she's going to get a contractor out there. She had insurance, so it's all going to be paid for. She, it's a stove fire is an electrical fire. So the stove has to be replaced. Cabinets will have to be fixed. Um, there's damage to the walls and stuff, you know, but it's done. Um, so it's basically, she gets a new section of her kitchen. Okay. And then she gets the entire house cleaned by a professional who can come in and get the smoke smell out. If that was the only thing that happened, 
it'd be okay. Not a problem. But with all the wedding stuff and all of Macy's new stuff there, it turned into a big drama. You know? So, it is just one thing. And then, of course, her washing machine is backing up. Well, you get the plumber out there. You know, if you've ever owned a house, you know, if it's not one thing, it's another. Okay? That there's no getting around that. So, yeah. It is what it is. Um, the final thing that went on um, is I went out to the farm. And I'm to a point where it's all just looking the same. I worked for four hours, and I swear it still looked the same to me. Um, I cleared out where the porch is going to be built. I am literally going to get a measuring tape out there, get my boards out there, get them marked. I am recycling some old uh, trailer deck boards for that, so I need to make sure I've got enough. Um, I know I have it for the front part. I just don't know if I have it for the long part. So, yeah. It is what it is, but I'll get it measured out. I am going to render some drawings on what the plan is for this house so that y'all can actually see where it's going to. Um, but, so anyway, I will put the tiny house footage that I think looks the same as last week in right here. All right, so I've been out here a few hours, um, about four, maybe four and a half. I've cleared this whole back from where I took down the tree branches. I actually took down some more tree branches um, because I could get to them once I got the others down. So this is pretty much cleaned out. I kind of wish I had the lawnmower to run over it, but all those stumps would tear up the lawnmower. So I think the back doesn't have any stumps, but I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I've been cleaning and I've cleaned all this fence row. Um, I showed you last week where I actually took and loppered a lot of stuff off. Well, I finished it and I cleaned out everything under the fence line is cut. It, I raked it, but it didn't all turn away. But as you can see, there's stuff on their side of the fence, but there's nothing on my side. And that's why is because I've been working the fence line for a good part of the day. Um, I do have two stumps right here. There's one and one. I've taken them down as far as I can. Um, and then I've got these here. So this one is woven into the fence. So I may or may not leave it. I don't know. But the front two will come out. That one will come out. The one over there, a little short one will come out. If I took it down as low as I could, then it's going to come out. Um, I think these two are going to come out and half of this one. Um, I'm not sure. It'll depend on whether this big tree, because it's like two in one. If this big tree doesn't come back in the spring, I will remove it and then I will leave that one. And then this little one, it's just too far out and the driveway, the short driveway is going to be here. And I'll go into that later. Um, I'm going to make some drawings and all of that but then I got I found the whole corner isn't that nice before it was just kind of there I've got some more um, stick uh, little trees in there that I've taken the branches off of but I still got to get that little dude right there out um, there are two pieces of fence <laughs> in the front and you can tell where I got to and where I didn't so I've worked this piece of fence right here I pulled a lot of the crap out of it um, in time, this fence will go away and it will be probably cable, pipe and cable. So, um, but we'll see. So I got down to there, the strawberry bed. Yes, I started another brush pile. I just couldn't lug all this stuff with all these stumps. And we are under burn ban, so it's not like this stuff is going anywhere for a while. So at least that pile can grow and still be out of the way but I got I got limbs picked up but I didn't get a whole lot of cleaning past down there it's back breaking work and I'll go up here and I'll show you what I mean because I did oops, I'm about to drop a glove sorry um I did clear up here so I cleared the entire front of the house because I think I have the stuff to do the porch on the inside of the house. Um, now it's going to be an L porch 
All right, these I dug up from around the fire pit. We're gonna change angles here so that we can see, okay? So, the front porch is going to be where the two, that cinder block and that cinder block are, is just gonna be a narrow walkway down to the swing and one step down. Um, this, however, at this cinder block, it's actually gonna go out to about this pile. So it's going to come further out here and I will have a nice little square um, deck and a little just walk off part. So yeah, I've been clearing this thinking that I can get the porch done. But this is the stuff I'm talking about, guys. This stuff, I have been down here with loppers. I literally have to be in this angle, um, leaned over it. I have kicked them, I have cut them, I've done everything. Um, I don't want them coming back up underneath the porch. And so I have kind of cleared this out. I missed these, unfortunately. So as you can see, those are in there pretty good. I'll have to take the loppers and cut them down below the dirt line. They have huge roots. I'll show you over here. This is a little pile of I've dug up. They have lots of roots. Big old tap root right there. But I'm getting them out of here. So I just, it's a slower pace than I thought. Um, that's a tree that I took out of the back fence line. It was dead. So I just broke it off with my hands. I felt really tough. Anyway, <laughs> fire pit had the... Um, blocks around it they will go back but this has got to be leveled there's got to be dirt brought in leveled um that kind of stuff yeah so we will get to that um i just piled them over here in front of the door for now it was 51 degrees this morning so i had my little hat on here my uh, ponytail hat and then it got stuck in the trees i was doing and got ripped off so it didn't get ripped off but it got snagged off all right so i have this side pretty much clear. I've raked it. Yes, there's probably more to decay away, but I think in the spring I should be able to get a mower over here. This is ready to build the porch. I still have to go through that. Um, what I, is no good is going to be burnt, and then what is good will be probably be incorporated into the tiny house, or at least some fencing. So, I'm going to call it a day. Still under a burn ban, um, which just went into effect not too long ago, which is funny because it's been super dry. So, yeah. As you can see, I didn't get that tree limbs cleared, but I got all the others. That's the only tree that I didn't get cleared, and I just went, I'm done. Uh, I got the limbs cleared, and then I was working. Okay, so some of you are probably saying, no, it looks a lot better. Me, I don't know. I really don't. I got the trees cut down and I've got the back part. Now the reason that I'm concentrating on that back part so is my toilet, when it goes in, has a back flap and it, I, I know I showed it to you guys before, it's a self-composting waterless, but it has a sunken tank, self-contained sunken tank that will last me, you only have to get the compost out of it every three to four weeks it says. For a family of, of three to four months, for a family of four. Well, there's only me, so, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know how long it's going to last. I don't know how long I'm going to have to turn, but it will be, definitely be a while before it gets full where I have to take the compost out. So, um, but that is why I want that back cleared and I've got to dig and, and put that tank in yeah and I want to do that before I secure the floor down um, I'm gonna put the floor in but I want to be able to really get that dug down in right and have it level and then have the back flap come out the back of the house so um, yeah working on that and then of course I cleaned on stuff and I carry I started a whole another pile I've carried all the stuff I've, I've cleared stuff the fence line is totally clear on that one end. Um, it is what it is. If it's not one thing, it's another. <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, there's just a lot of drama this week. After the wedding, I think the drama will go away. Um, 
I am praying that their honeymoon goes smoothly. So, uh, the only thing that I'm going to mention is the weather. So, it hasn't rained any measurable amount in over two months. And, yeah, we're supposed to get rain this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> everything's inside it doesn't matter so we're good all right well i'm gonna get off of here um just too much drama this week for me so oh, today is tuesday i just have to work today and tomorrow and then uh wednesday night i'm gonna cover my grays thursday i am gonna bake all of the cupcakes and get my outfit steamed and pressed and see if i need to hem it um, and then Friday, I've got to get everything to the venue, all the cupcakes, everything to the venue and have the rehearsal dinner. And then Saturday is the wedding. Sunday, I'm helping them get, they're, they're leaving on their honeymoon, but I'm helping them get all their stuff to the other house and out of the venue. And then Monday, I'm hoping to be able to have Monday and Tuesday as a breather, but I don't know. It depends on what all goes on. <laughs> it really does. Just depends. So, anyway, all right, I'm going to let you off of here. Um, thanks for watching. Too much drama this week. Just too much drama.